five, four, three, initialize fail lab. My name is Crystal Dilworth. I'm a PhD candidate in molecular neuroscience at the California Institute of Technology. Today in the fail lab, we have Dr. Gita Kaluru. Gita is an associate professor of biology at the California Polytechnic State University of San Luis Obispo, where she studies aggression and sexual selection in the model system Gerodinus Metallicus. So, tribalism. Homo sapiens and pan troglodytes evolved to live in social groups called tribes. Humans form groups based on religion, region, ethnicity, and ideology. We can't survive on our own, so we have to work with others within our tribe. Let's take a look at a clip of an interaction between a tribe and an outsider. There's a lot going on in this clip, but as a neuroscientist, I'm really curious about the processes inside the victim's head. So, aren't you going to need your brain? In 2012, the National Institute of Health conducted an experiment to see how we respond to positive, neutral, and negative stimuli. For positive stimulation, human subjects were shown pictures of smiling faces, kittens, and a slinky. And for negative stimuli, they were shown pictures of angry faces, a snake, and a gun. The interesting result is that for negative stimuli that would have been present for prehistoric humans, such as angry faces or a snake, the pathway went through the amygdala, where more modern threats, such as a gun, activate a different pathway through the cortex. However, the reaction time and emotional response were the same for both categories. So even though our evolution hasn't caught up to the advent of guns, our brains still learn to react to them as a mortal threat. Oh, hi. This reminds me of a theory put forth at a recent forum on human social complexity. According to this theory, the ability to kill from a distance while indeed disturbing may have led to the equalization of power in human tribes. Prior to the advent of weapons, our societies were more like those of chimpanzees, a dominance hierarchy with some individuals subjugating others. But with the evolution of weapons, subordinate individuals were able to overcome their more powerful dominant rivals. So those who want power have to resort to other means. Charm, cunning, persuasion, even cooperation. And these are the hallmarks of what make us human. Let's look at what happens later. It's interesting that even though the outsider has proven himself to be a threat, members of the same threatened tribe are still willing to protect him. Today we've learned about our tribal origins and our use of weapons and violence. But one of the most important qualities of being human is the ability to learn from the mistakes of our past. That means our future is entirely up to us. And that's always a win. We want to know what you think. Is this a win or a fail? Also send us your videos of surprising compassion. And follow us on Facebook where the conversation continues. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Crystal. And thanks to all of you for stopping by. We'll be back next week with more science. But until then, when you can't take any more, and violence is your only option, you've got psychosis.